Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I think we've started. I, I, every week I get this wrong. Now it puts the live up afterwards. I We're waiting for Bruce. I'm guessing the clocks have changed and then Bruce, Bruce probably refuses to change his clocks. I don't know. Do they change in New Zealand? I know they have in North America. But anyway, Louis is with us again. Uh, those, right. of you, those of you that have been before know Louis. And a dear old friend of mine, uh, Mike Smith uh, from Scotland, has joined us as well. well. Actually, I don't know. Are you in Scotland at the moment, Mike? I, I moved to the metropolis that is London. Ooh, hang on. Hey, normally, when Bruce joins, we do a hat thing. Uh, oh. <laughs> Beat you got a whole hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good day, Bruce. How you doing? G'day. Hang on, I'm all talked up here. I put my earphone through my hat. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, no. I mustn't, I mustn't crash. Hang on. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a whole hit. That was uh, the Sarah, my partner. She's a sculptor, and that was a monkey on my back. But that was that's another thing. In fact, the monkey's here somewhere. But anyway, that's another thing altogether. Uh, right, where were we? Yeah, Mike. So you're you're in the smoke now, uh, or somewhere somewhere down mm -hmm. south, I guess that is. And uh, you and I first met when um, you were learning to fly multi rotors. I've got a bit of an echo here. I'm trying to see if I can get rid of it. And uh, well, actually, before multi rotors existed, you had a microcopter thing, didn't you? Yeah, we. I I had the UAVP. Uh, was it Wolfgang Mer Meringer? Wolfgang. Um, uh, yeah, we 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 were we had a multi rotor before there was any commercial or there was all open source. Yeah, the very first. And the and I remember that the 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 flight control board. Go on, shock our dear viewers how much the and I can't remember what year it was, but shock them at just just the board. What the board cost? So it would have been. I was working out the other day. It would have been thirteen years ago, and the board cost a thousand pounds at least. A thousand pounds, unpopulated. So you then had to you then had to do all your soldering, do all your you're putting it together. Uh, and, and then hope and pray if it worked. Yeah. Weren't the, the upgrades paid at certain time? Uh, say again? The upgrades of the, the software of the, 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 the board, weren't they, they, they charged something for, for the upgrades, right? No, no, I think Microcopter, I don't know if Microcopter did, but the, the UAVP group were very good yeah. and they, would you, you call it, re, uh, recompiled or re, redid the code every other night and uh, you mm -hmm. can download the fresh version every day and see if it yeah. worked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to bring... It was uh, a really the... friendly group. That was a really friendly group. <laughs> and there was only a handful in the world. Before that, really, it was that Japanese uh, gyro-based quad that everybody had. Was it the XUFO? Something like that. I can't remember uh, what it was. The XUFO and the Dragonfly was just out. Yeah, that's right. Um, and the reason I wanted to bring Mike on, we'll move through our running order, which I've already broken out, I've broken away from already, is, is just to go, gee whiz, the history of this whole thing and how things have changed. I was talking to somebody last week, Wednesday, about LIDAR, and I can remember, oh, and the other thing I did, because uh, I knew Mike was in Scotland, so I poured myself a whiskey in honour of that, because we had plenty of these, or I did anyway, when we were discussing how the world might look uh, in five or ten years' time. And it's just, we didn't, we, we got some of it, but we didn't get all of it. Not by a long, long way. Not by a long, 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 long way. But uh, anyway, let's go, let's go back to that running order thing, because that sort of makes things a little bit easier. Um, it's a bit thin tonight because there's a big DJI event on. Um, and I think it's perhaps uh, the Airworks event. It might well be turning out to be the go-to event these days. Um, if you're in North America, it seems that uh, seems that everybody's waiting for the press releases for today and they're all coming about. So we'll talk to Louis about those in a minute. Um, but I know, and I wanted to mention that Joshua, who often turns up from Kitty Hawk IO on, on the, uh, the chat, he's there and they've released uh, their new version of their ground control there um flight management software and that's what he's touting there and i think gene's also kicking about and doing some lectures as well and uh, 
I also wanted to mention that Gene had a great article. If you haven't seen it, I'll put in the links below, and that was all about obstacles and solutions to implementing drones in your uh, uh, emergency services organization. And the first thing I wanted to talk about, which I don't know if the, the rest of you guys saw, was the AT&T cow, sell on, whips, yep. sell on wings, going to Puerto Rico. And I think they're doing an amazing job, uh, that AT&T crowd, of getting their their work out there and getting into real emergencies and making a real difference. I don't know, any thoughts on that one? So, uh, that, that uh, RC helicopter, that RC helicopter, which is an RC helicopter, is it viable? Wouldn't the blimp do a better job? Wouldn't what do a, a blimp? A blimp? Yeah. yeah. Maybe? Maybe? Or, 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 or people able to drive up to the top of a tall hill with a stick with antennas on it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, because I don't see the, the point of to establish um, communications, having a vehicle that can fly for a couple of hours. Um, doesn't make sense to me. It's always the best tool for the job. So. Uh, something ephemeral. Okay, let, let's all get our cell phones. Okay, uh, okay, we have two hours to speak, so everybody speaks during two hours. Uh, does does make sense? Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. I was supposed. To, I thought I'd be talking about this, saying, "Rah rah, what a good job they were doing of getting the UAS out there." But I suppose you're absolutely right. I hadn't I hadn't thought about it in in that regard. And in fact, in the past, I've managed to get some. Um, when our cell towers have been down because of snow, uh, but it was a windy day, I've managed to get SUS news out to using the miracle of putting my cell phone on a kite and um, <laughs> and, and then the Wi-Fi hotspotting that from a kite because yeah. the next cell tower is only over the hill. That's all. That's the only distance I had to go. I didn't have to go. And that was a fairly, as long as the wind blows, I suppose, when the wind blows, a, a mantra for this year. That, that's why yeah, I was I saying a blimp. Sorry, Bruce. Yeah, no, I think this is more about marketing than technology, isn't it? AT&T are looking to get their name in the headlines and no better way than to use a drone because drone is flavor of the month. So by doing this, they got all this media coverage. If they'd put a blimp up or if they'd put up a, a stick with a repeater on or gone to the top of a hill, no one would have cared. Yeah. Well, at least it's not bad, bad drone publicity. Yeah. So it's drones doing good. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll take it. No, no, I think no. I think I think they've done a good job, and I think perhaps to me more importantly is the fact they're using a helicopter. And it's a, you know, at least we're not seeing a, a, a multi rotor that can fly for ten minutes being sent there and uh, to do the job. Uh, it, yeah, and uh, I'm a fixed wing aeroplane sort of a guy, and that's what I would rather see droning on for ten or fifteen hours or twenty four hours, a big one. <laughs> You know, there's no need for it to be under a helicopter. But anyway, that's that's yeah. not how I expected that one to go. I expected that just to be positivity all around. That didn't go so well. <laughs> I'm with the blimp idea, to be honest. I'm with the blimp. Yeah, no, it, yeah. Just, it would have been a good idea. Yeah. Or a Absolutely. kite. Or a kite. Yeah, it'd have to be a big kite. Well, actually, that was something. We used to, we did kite photography, didn't we? we did. Kite air. I forgot that. Yeah, we the did. Black art, the black art of the kite black photography. Art of Kite aerial photography. If anyone, if you ever see it, it is, it is, I can't take a decent photo from a multi rotor for toffee. I take rubbish photos. It doesn't matter. You give me an expensive camera. I'll take Come rubbish on. photos. In your roof. You, we've seen your roof, Gary. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that was, that was in power inspecting. That was power inspecting, Lee. But it, um, but if you if you ever see kite aerial photography that looks really really good and the, you see a fantastic shot, then you must know how hard it was to get that shot. And whoever took that shot is a real genius, as as Mike says. We used to call that the black art. And similarly, we had a toolkit. I remember now. I'm remembering we had a toolkit of kite and multi rotor and aircraft. We had every every single toy in the box to try and get the shot. And often we still wouldn't get the shot. <laughs> but, we would get a lot of we get a lot of images. Uh, <laughs> we would try and yeah. The one thing when you see a great kite aerial photography shot is you know that there's a terabyte of images that the guy has thrown away to get that one shot. 
yeah absolutely but they are always they're always delightful when you do see them um i wonder we've moved very quickly to what uh what i think is is the nightmare um nightmare every week might you won't have seen it but we tend, tend to have a, a regulation rant of some sort or another and i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this at bruce and say bruce i haven't seen i'm surprised you haven't put a video up yet about the indian regulations you must have read them as well proposed yeah i did see yeah i did see the proposed indian regulations and i'm thinking yeah um didn't we, didn't we touch on this briefly last week about having to fly you know uh, indoors and you've got to call the police to let them know i mean this is like super crazy stuff but I, it is only proposed remember it could change you know they might um, alter it and they're looking for feedback so a, a bureaucratic one of the most popular ways when you want to introduce harsh regulations is you go right over the top and everyone goes no 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 and they go oh, okay we've listened to you so we're only going to do this which is what they plan to do in the first place but everyone feels happy because they've had these really potentially bad regulations wound down so they feel they've scored a victory but the regulators they knew what they wanted to do right from the get-go and they just overstated it to start with so then everybody seems to you know it all works out it's only when, if they went in and said we want to do a and a was the original thing and people said no that's terrible they've got nowhere to go there's no fallback position so by overstating to start with you can fall back to your actual required position and make people think they've scored a victory but i don't think i'm not seeing anyone or not seeing very many people in india protesting on people are seeing people in india say oh great regulations are coming and they don't actually seem to have read them they've read the first five lines uh but uh, but, but but no more so i'm a little bit worried that they're not jumping up and down enough yeah we've got to realize i think as a hobby model aircraft isn't a big one in india india is a pretty it is only just sort of moved out of the third world nation status hasn't it i mean it's got some really good technology companies and things and it's but there's a lot of people on the breadline in india as a percentage of their population the number that fly model aircraft or have drones is really 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 small so you don't expect to get a big i mean look at the response to that caa survey in the uk as a percentage of the population and i think most of these countries they they got more problems than drones to worry about so they don't expect to get too much in the way of feedback yeah i suppose you could be right with that but it's one of those nations i instantly thought wow this this is going to be a nation where where the drones could actually make a decent amount of of, of useful good you know they, they there really is infrastructure that needs inspecting there's all sorts of stuff that needs to happen there and this is where uas you know perhaps in europe yeah. or america it's a bit of a luxury perhaps but you've got to remember, in, in india labor is uber cheap people work for you know crumbs so why would you use an expensive piece of technology to achieve a task costing thousands and in, in, in capital costs and in operating costs when you can hire a team of of people to do it for a tenth the cost okay and I'll, jobs? Give you, I'll give you one bruce for instance at my company we fly the drones to survey the wind turbine generators uh, usually it's a job done by people that uh, rappel down the the, the turbines let's say a turbine a wind turbine generator can be more than 100 meters high and we you, you can have uh, 60 70 80 meters blades so rappelling down that that is a dangerous situation and it's not something that you can do easily and fast so easy and yeah. fast yeah. Is, is something that that you can do with the a robotic drone not even a, a manually fly, a flown a drone because manually flown no one can fly a drone manually or just a bunch of guys can fly a drone manually a nearby a wind yeah, turbine you, generator your country is a big difference to, to india where you got people who who work to that you know they can barely feed themselves they'll do anything for a dollar or a rupee or whatever um it's a it's a completely different situation and if you've looked at the, the power wiring have you seen the power wiring in the back streets of delhi have you seen yeah. what the but energy the, reticulation course, looks it's like not so much, <laughs> it's not so much the cost of labor but it's the cost of uh, the how long do you have the wind turbine generator stopped that that has a cost to the owner of the wind turbine generator because every minute that wind turbine generator is stopped they're not producing so they're not earning money so they they do this balance and uh, we will have to go very precise on the maths uh, that you have to do uh, the stop the time it is stopped and the the cost of the service and the the way that the service is done you cannot do uh, uh, for instance the survey of a, a blade the wind turbine blade 
using untrained people. Trained people have to do it so they are not they don't work for the rice or or for the curry. They just there are professionals that work and have um, uh, specialization on that job. So they are not cheap. Uh, it really depends on what you want to do. For instance, also, you cannot do a, a, a survey or orthophotogrammetry using people. Uh, I mean, it, as well, I mean, it's new technical infrastructure, which when you look at it, it, the people who have paid, the businesses who have paid to put in that infrastructure to make sure that the maintenance is tip top means nothing. Yeah. They're not going to send, I, I take your point, Bruce, with a lot of the, the old infrastructure, yeah, it's like a Christmas tree with the, the electricity coming off it, but that's, <clears throat> unfortunately, this is where you see the real world, which is that the companies look at profit, they don't actually look at people. Most of the population they will sell you the electricity, the new stage of infrastructure doesn't, it's unfair, but it doesn't have anything to do with them. They're not going to feel anything other than the electric shock coming off of the, the wind turbines. It's not going to send any jobs out to them. They're, they're going to have foreign operators operating foreign machines uh, for foreign businesses. It's this, I have no political agenda with this, but that's how it works. That's what investment is in the modern age. Yeah, it's In the end, it's all e economics. So Yeah. But, yeah. yeah I just well, looked at the results. At India, and 65% of um, electricity consumed in India is generated by thermal power plants, 22 by hydroelectric, 3% by nuclear, and the rest from alternate sources like solar, solar wind, biomass. So there, for wind generators, as an example, there are not a lot of wind generators in India at this stage. It's a low-tech country in terms of its infrastructure. Um, so I think uh, drones have a potential, but probably not today, maybe in 10 years' time. No, uh, far more valuable in more developed countries like where you live, Louis, and where I live, where we have more infrastructure that is requires that kind of maintenance and, and well, that kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, Come on, even cell towers. You, yeah. For instance, do, 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 the main, do, 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 do the survey of a cell tower, you use a, a, an automated drone. Uh, at my company, we are focused on the, the, the wind turbine generator market because the, this is a, 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 a technical decision that we have, but we can easily do uh, any kind of vertical infrastructure. We can do the, the cell towers, the power, uh, the, power the, uh, the big towers of power lines, we can do a lot of things. Uh, the most complex one is the wind turbine generator, which is very complex. But every kind, and in India, you have the, the, the cell towers. And what do you do? You get a guy climbing up the, the tower and see if the, 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 the bolts or the screws are rusted or need to be replaced or if uh, an isolation is broken. No, you can do it in two minutes with a, with a drone. Well, yes. Um, I, 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 I think you've got to remember roads and railways as well, railways especially mm. in, in, in India. Um, they're, they're, they're big on that there. And uh, roads is roads is roads, uh, depending on, you know, it doesn't matter how developed or undeveloped your country is. And they, they need them. One of the uh, things that annoys me here uh, when people go on about delivery drones in Africa is uh, actually what people would really like is for you to improve the roads so you didn't need the delivery drones yeah. to do that. You know, it's ridiculous. You know, there are no roads, so let's put in drones no improve the roads uh, <laughs> no, uh, uh, come on uh, you but they'll, all, need survey. they'll need we all know the, the story of africa and the, the telephones uh, most of the countries in africa have a lousy slash non-existent telephone infrastructure and the cell phone was a boom and all those countries are way ahead of for instance the us on cell phone uh, structures, and oh, yeah, yeah, perhaps the start. same can 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 be used on India. And we already have seen uh, good companies based in in India that are doing very good uh, solutions for drones. Um, and perhaps is is an incentive to get more innovative solutions from Indian companies. And there are already a few, and I, I believe we'll see a, a quite a few more coming up. I think it personally, I think it's a huge market and a very exciting market, and, and I look forward to seeing it roll out. But when I see 
plainly Am Am amazon did go there and, and, and make a bid to have uh, drone delivery trials there and i know a few other uh unmanned traffic management companies have been there and shown their wares show and tell if you will and so when i see provision for uh electronic identification and i see this and i see that i see the the the, the fingerprints of all sorts of people pulling strings behind the scenes and those regulations again i should have my tuesday tin foil hat to wear but <laughs> I, I do see i do see i see trouble ahead and, and, and the other thing the other persistent rant i have there is the minimum age 18 and that's like yeah come on really fly drone so, yeah 18 and not only that mike but um to uh you you have to report to the police that you're flying even if you're flying indoors <laughs> indoors indoors is a bit extreme scotland scotland if you're doing commercial work they changed it recently where you have to you, you, you would phone up the tower if they were anywhere close but then you have to phone police scotland as well with a reference number so the oh. police in scotland are, are also yeah it seems to be uh, it's not but that's mandatory. fine that's 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 flying commercially isn't it and i think part of that is i know they, yeah. they recommend doing that in in london and part of the reason for that is is because every man and his dog rings the police to say oh there's somebody staring in at my windows and they know they know then oh no it's only mike and yes he is staring yeah, through yeah. my windows <laughs> yeah people are starting to go crazy about that man they're losing their temper about it it's amazing i've had a few people recently that Especially unreasonable the reaction that they are having um, in general right. terms. A police helicopter flies across your house, but I'm not fast. Um, but a drone, even if it's operating commercially and proved. I was going to say, you, you, you'd have all your PPE gear on and your hat and your a clipboard, probably, and all <laughs> cones and all that sort of thing, wouldn't you, these days? Well, surely people would, would see that you're not an ad hoc operator, you are somebody trying to do a job. The, 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 the doesn't people don't have uh, back to this technological age. I think <clears throat> I don't think it's a technological age. I think it's just people. They don't have any patience. They don't like to think. They don't like to consider the context of a situation, and they will launch straight in. And most of the time, when I've encountered people, it's some other aspect of their bad day. You have nothing to do with it. It's just that you're vantage point to launch their vent their anger at you know it, it, it's done cool. um, people are people so why should it the be facebook, the facebook generation it's not uh, the facebook uh, the, the last my... the last lady that did it was in her mid 50s and she came across to me and i i was in my truck i had packed up everything i was getting ready to go and it was a beautiful day i had the window rolled down yeah, and you know, on you know, kind of on the on the open window, that was a boundary that she crossed, man. And she's not a Facebook generation. She just oh no, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying the Facebook generation is the, the the Facebook people that go and post the kitties and uh, then all the <laughs> that stupid thing and change the. The, their photograph for the the tragedy at the moment uh, uh, we are mm -hmm. uh, that's that that generation that goes to the social media stuff uh, th there was a yeah. a series that I, s I usually see uh, it's a kind of sci-fi uh, serial uh, I saw one of the latest episodes and I had something like this and it was very funny I can't remember yeah. the the series now. Black Mirror. Well, movie. No, a lot of this stuff is is generated by the media. The media give the public a perception that drones evil. It's spying on you. It's going to chase you. It's a dangerous thing. So it's natural the public respond in that way. And we're still seeing those stories. You know that. that one recently from Australia where there was uh, a woman who was sure that she was being, or a couple of women being spied on by a drone and, and like really seriously, the media has to take some responsibility for this. They focus on the negative, always focus on the negative, very little on the positive. You know, you have a, a positive drone story. We read it because we follow the, the drone industry, but the average person on the street doesn't read those stories. They don't see those stories. They live in the backwaters of the media, the mainstream press, you know, those 
iconic publications like the Daily Mail, which are oracles of truth and <laughs> honesty, they present the, you know, the drone hits airliner and all sort of rubbish, and that's what people read. And so they fear drones. They don't understand them. They, when they see one, they think it's spying on them. They don't realize that they're really not that yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, yeah. Everybody uh, has to uh, uh, entitles itself uh, in, in or herself uh, as the Justice League of uh, everything. So they go. <laughs> and, do you have? You cannot fly here, and you say, "I have a permit yeah. to to fly here." <laughs> I, I don't know what that is. Uh, you cannot fly here. I'm going to call the police. Go ahead. Well, that wasn't helped by police. Trudeau. In, in Canada, Trudeau, or not, in the, was it, no, the, the Minister of Transport, what's his name, um, he told people if they see a drone, they should call the police. That was That's what he said to the people. And so no wonder you get this kind of response. And that's why, uh, well, maybe that's what he, maybe also I'm wrong with, with the Indian thing. Maybe they're correctly thinking ahead and, and getting ahead of that. But I know uh, certainly in London, pe people do call the police, operate, commercial operators call the police in order to, make sure the police know when they start receiving the telephone calls that it's a it's a it's a proper operation so i suppose it's fair enough um, we, remind we, had, we had guys here that were operating filming with all the permits and um, they were the guys that were operating the drones that called the police because they were being harassed by some justice <laughs> man that so oh, come on I'm, going exactly. to call the, I'm, I'm the one who's going to call the police <laughs> Mm, mm, yeah, no, absolutely. Just remind me, Mike, um, for our, our half a UK viewer, um, your <laughs> first permission to fly, What? What you were in the top first 10, weren't you, in the UK? Uh, but it's 58, number 58. Oh, 58. That's close to 10, isn't it? In many ways, that's close it's to It's still 10. under 100, man. It's still, it's still, it's under still 100. closer than 101. Oh, all right. That's first 100, then. I got that wrong. <laughs> if I had listened to you, if I had listened to you, I would have a number under 10, but I, I waited. I waited for a good six months after your advice, but yeah. <laughs> And it, it, well, I'm just just trying to sort of you know pad in some some history to it all there really, because I can remember you and I talking about wouldn't it be nice if the thing could fly in a circle and point the camera at the centre? I can remember us thinking and, and without us having to do it with our thumbs, um, yeah. and that was that was a big gee whiz. Wouldn't it be nice? And then another wouldn't it be nice was if it flew back and forth in a zigzag so that we didn't have to work out how to do the survey flights. It would do it yeah. all by itself. Um, yeah. I, I can remember those comments. And that circle was for, uh, for doing quarries because at the time we thought doing quarries would be a good idea. And, and that definitely yeah. wasn't on anyone's idea. Because we spoke, as I said, I spoke to a guy last week with a LIDAR and mm. And with the LIDAR, they're, they're actually able to see where they put the charges in the rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, get, it's, it's at the point where there's... It, it's, it's funny, I mean, the one thing that we did always talk about, because we both like to speak very generally, was the technology, you know, the slow reaches of the technology, and then the users, and then the public, and then all the the... It, it is like a crescendo that's building up slowly but surely. Um, and the, the technology at this point is beyond the, is probably beyond application, applications to process it. They're still, they're able to collect so much information, but it's actually, when you start to get that into an organization, you actually see how disorganized a lot of these big, we yeah, have a lot of the players are you realize that they they don't know what's going on in their own companies they don't know where their information is it's a scrabble to find that it's scheduling all this types of stuff so we it, it's like it's like all the other things at the moment we have the technical capability to solve any problem that the species has but the population lacks the will or the awareness or the I mean, like Lewis says, we would rather post the pictures of the cats on Facebook because that seems a bit easier than trying to solve any of the issues that make our lives. You know, 
quadro. Ok, <laughs> I'm going to do a TV, a TV recommendation. Uh, that was the show I was mentioning. Uh, it's The Orville, and it's uh, season one, episode seven. Go get, okay. go see it, and you'll have you'll have a fun. But what but you Orville. were saying, but basically, what 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 happens these days is this is a lidar. Bah. With a six meter range, oh, okay, and less than ten dollars. But what, wow. what what resolution at six meters? I don't care. It just <laughs> <laughs> something at six meters, and it's this size, and you can get uh, six of these on a circular pod, and have Ardu pilot uh, do collision avoidance with this by. Okay, it's six meters, or let's be honest, uh, it will work at five. But the, the, the thing is, these days the technology is evolving so fast that, uh, for instance, I, I, I'm very curious to see what the guys in India uh, come up, uh, only because it is what they'll come up will be our future. Uh, because like the phone, the phone story uh, in Africa, uh, they have no vices and they have no market. So we're going to establish things, and the other the other players will will follow them because they'll get, good, get a good track record. Yeah, I think what I find that. interesting is if you look on YouTube, there's a lot of Indian educational institutions put videos up, students put videos up of their projects. They build all sorts of stuff. They're really into technology. They do that, and they're really enthusiastic. And some of the stuff is, you know, kind of amusing, but some of it is pretty damn good. Are they shooting themselves in the foot by saying you have to be 18 to fly a drone? Because I suspect most of these students are under 18 and they're saying, well, sorry, you can't do drones until you get a bit older. That's kind of stupid, isn't it? I'm sure no. there will be exemptions. Uh, no, 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 no. It's already written in educational establishments, indoors, uh, 18, digga, 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 digga. it's already written. In, well, again, in the uh, in the proposed regulations. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, maybe... But enough people need need to shout about that. No, I think um, I think I possibly think... they'll just ignore it. Is the other thing. I mean, one of the greatest uh, oh, yes. tools that the population has is to ignore the rules on mass. I mean, that's that's what changes the rules. It's not. Oh, that that's you where the lobby for things. That the, the Mr. Gandhi was from India, so we'll have a, <laughs> a, a Gandhi for the drones. <laughs> And, and he was throwing off the train. cannabis in many countries, changing, we just already have mess ignoring the rules. Come on, Bruce, we already have a Gandhi in New Zealand. Do we? Is that yeah. Bruce? It's wow. Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> he was thrown off the train just down the road from here in um, Peter Mac. Oh, goodness me, Halloween was last week. And going for the Halloween effect there, uh, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I cool. live in a, a, a very eclectic uh, place in London. It's um, I'm trying to find a spot. Let's try to find a spot where it's quiet and I can laugh out loud. But, uh, oh, to, no, to no avail. To no avail. Is it quite quiet in London tonight? Then that your laughter disturbs the city. I, I, my my laughter is 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 a sonic weapon. You say you lie there at six meters, man. If you stand next to me and I but barrel laugh it destroys it destroys people's <laughs> you're quite safe as long as he's laughing it's like a buzz bomb it's when the laughter stops you worry that was a good unmanned aircraft reference all the way back to the 40s there bruce well done what, Mark. missed that bruce sorry no very good that's very good uh what else was i gonna let's go back to the running order um because we are di diving around and about here um Oh no, that was that was a bit. Oh, um, David hasn't got David Walters was going to join us, but he's on the M40, uh, coming back from some sort of um, team building thing uh, in Windsor, and so obviously he's still stuck in traffic. I was going to ask him about um, flight tests in England, but I can't ask him because he's not here. So, did anyone else see anything else this week that they wanted yes. to discuss? Uh oh, did, here did we you go. See that? That was a two kilogram, four kilogram drone in Japan crashed into a crowd of people. It was dropping lolly sweets from the air and it looked like there was a significant failure, probably in ESC or something, and it just sort of spiraled into the crowd. And no one was killed, but it wasn't a very good who was in charge of health and safety there? <laughs> Normally, I mean I've done I've done lolly drops with drones and models for, for crowds of children, but I 
generally fly over an unoccupied area, drop them, and then the kids run out and pick them up. Who was flying over the crowd? What idiot did that? It was four kilograms of Swedes. <laughs> Well, um, it was it was quite well, a big thing, wasn't it? It was quite a big machine. Um, I don't quite know how much uh, you had on board. Uh, but we, uh, don't, don't, 800 or 900 uh, drone uh, exocopter. Don't you think he clipped that tree that was in the front of the shop? I don't know. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't know, but it definitely it, it failed in a most um, dramatic fa uh, way, didn't it, as it dived yeah. down and dived into the crowd and one of the comments i've seen is that uh, it was heavily underpowered drone so something um, burnt which is the usual right see it was too many sweets then it's not underpowered yeah. it's too many sweets <laughs> well sweets will next make time, you overweight you know <laughs> next time go go with sugarless sweets Yes, absolutely. <laughs> there was another um, failure story, and I can't, I uh, can't. Um, there was also speed controllers, um, but I can't remember what it was. But uh, yeah, it, it's amazing how people. Um, uh, oh, that's right. It was a really big. It was a really big machine, and um, they hadn't calibrated the speed controllers uh, correctly, and two of them decided to reset themselves. <laughs> And, and and down it came but they were operating the thing without a payload on board it normally carried a really big i think it was like a 40 kilo machine in total like a hollywood camera underneath it so to do the test flying they thought oh well we'll test fly it and um all, all be we won't put the expensive camera on but they didn't put a dummy load on they put, put brought the throttle back to zero uh, when it was ballooning up and then two speed controllers reset itself so luckily it didn't destroy the camera but as we move into these bigger platforms the way where i'm trying to go roundabout way is the way we fly these things and operate you've got to you've got to have more systems and procedures in place you can't just say oh it's a phantom switch it on off i go um okay. Oh, here we go. Go on. Here comes Louis. Here we go. I'm, I'm on a red now. <laughs> Today I'm on a red. Okay, not only procedures. Uh, most of these uh, drones, uh, people build them and try to take pro uh, usage of open source platforms like Autopilot, PX4, uh, uh, which are perhaps the two most used open source platforms. And these are not easy platforms at their current stage. They require some knowledge, although we are trying to, to make it as user-friendly as possible. And people don't know. And if you go to the Facebook or to the Ardupilot uh, forum, you see some questions from guys from universities, from companies, doing some <coughs> questions that you go and say, Okay, this guy never flew an RC plane, never flew, never used an RC car. So they're doing uh, ignorant questions, and we have to be very careful, especially on the open source flight stacks, to cater for these users. And that, that's, that's something that we have to be very careful. Even the, the big commercial guys like DJI, uh, and I'm just speaking on the mid up to the 10 to 10 15 kilos drones um even dji has lots of restrictions in place that is to save the users from themselves and the open source stacks also do some some of that but we have to lower the barrier to entry to these guys because not calibrating the esc um, it's a technical problem we can sort it out with different technologies like the new uh, UAV CAN uh, ESCs, but until we see them, will be uh, a very long time. But yeah, um, operations, uh, first of all, and most of the, the so-called companies that come up on the market just go and say, oh, we can make money from a drone. So they go buy a drone or build a drone and buy all the parts on the bank goods, hobby kings and gear vests, put together a drone and go fly because the software is free. We can do everything and let's go and operate commercially. And usually they, they suffer some hiccups. Well, I was quite amazed. I saw a chat. Um, you probably saw the video as well. 
and he uh, had a, a large, quite a large helicopter. I want to say uh, probably eight hundred size six. I don't know a lot about helicopters, but it was big. It was a big RC helicopter, and uh, he was bemoaning the fact that he'd um, he'd smacked it, and not too bad a failure. Yeah. Just rolled, rolled it back, and he'd, he'd knocked the tail rotor. But the thing was was moving backwards across a tennis court. I and, saw that. And had he didn't have an autopilot or anything on it yet, but. Um, but the first RC thing he'd ever bought was a gas-powered large helicopter. It's yeah. like, yay! You know, yeah. Yeah, you just... Let me get my... It's not my first, it, I think it was my second uh, RC helicopter. It was one of those small Kyocho ones. Uh, it was a pain in the ass to, to, to operate, but I learned a lot with it. Yeah, and this, yeah. this chat was asking, should he homemade uh, some tail rotor blades. Uh, yeah, whilst he yeah. waited, whilst he <laughs> yeah. waited for the other ones. To... Should I three D print? No, should I three D print the blades? That's right. Look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> so yes, expect expectations of, of systems are very very high. Um, I suppose, Mike, did we have any expectations when we we started, or were we just very glad if it actually flew? Yeah, we shattered all our expectations straight away. I think. It's, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 like the, the, it's just it's like everything else. We've we've fallen into this trap of the black magic box that's going to solve. It works automatically. It's going to solve all our problems. It's going to be a big money maker. It doesn't matter whether you're looking at economics or uh, what's left really in the world is economics and business. Um, that's the attitude that people have. Most people don't know what's under the hood, myself included, with a lot of things. I mean, this is the reason that I can say this. It's the only place that I have gotten under the hood is drones. Um, and it was a huge learning curve. Even, and this is going to sound daft to three, all three of you, even plugging in a LiPo battery for the first time. So you read all the warnings, you look at all the things, you solder the cables, you double check the solders on the cables, you triple check it, you look at the charge and things. Even then, that physical step of connecting something you know, which is is a risk. Um, but then that's coming from people who sit down and look at risk. You know, we... I think if, if there's a lot of stuff recently in popular culture about um, that is part of part of modern culture is that because systems have become so managed and automated uh, and streamlined, um, people have lost the capability of deductive reasoning of of looking at the the context of what it is they're doing, what risks are associated with it, what are the outside chances of stuff going wrong. And then, even from that point, that's when your learning curve starts because you you put the propellers on, and it <laughs> and it slices your fingers. <laughs> yeah, not every. This is the point. Not everybody does it. Um, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure Bruce is going to have a, a gem and Bush Pilot 2001 in the uh, in the comments is turning as a line 800 into a GPS uh, drone. But I bet you you've flown that a line 800 before, and it's not your first ever platform. <laughs> I bet you Bush Pilot 2001, Bruce. I, I also bet you've got something salient to say about technology, people, and the way things are, or something amusing. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> amusing. Not me. No, I I, I had a. Uh, a phone call at one stage and a guy turned up at my workshop with this great big octocop with a propeller it had 24 inch propellers that's 600 mil propellers and he rolled up this thing cost him tens of thousands of dollars maybe like over ten thousand anyway and he said i've just bought this i'm going to do some commercial uh, drone work uh, but i need a bit of a hand and i said okay what's the problem he says well i bought it and apparently i can fly it with my my iPad, but I, I, I've never flown anything like this before. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Can you show me how to use it? And I'm thinking, my goodness. Now, this guy had spent all this money buying this big, expensive drone, and he believed that he could just use his iPad to fly this thing. I said, well, you know, have you got a maintenance schedule? No, it's electric. It doesn't need maintenance, he said. And so, like, he was completely unaware of all the risks, the practical, you know, practical issues and so forth. And I basically said, go and buy a toy from the local you know, department store, learn to fly properly. And then if you still want to do it, then come back and I'll, I'll help you a bit further. 
He went and bought a toy, found out how hard it was and sold the whole lot, but, which is fortunate, I think, for the safety of the nation. But that's the kind of thing people do. They read how easy these things are to fly and to, to use. And they think, oh, I'll just spend $20,000 and I'll make a fortune because everyone wants drones, you know. But no, they, they, they come in completely unaware and un, with outrageous expectations. And I think that's where a lot of the safety issues come because, again, it's probably a little bit down to the media. The media is telling everyone these are so easy to use and there's such a big demand for drone services. A lot of people spy an opportunity, go out, and without even planning, spend a lot of money and end up you know, endangering themselves and others and wasting all their money. And the, on the other hand, um, on one of the DJI Facebook groups, uh, um, we have the guys that... Uh, Oh, I just bought um, a DJI Spark. Uh, how much should I charge for filming a, a, a wedding? And the pros there say, don't do it. So that, uh, you get the guys that go high and the guys that go low. And it's a mess. It, it may, it's easy uh, to, to do wrong, basically. It's very easy to do wrong these days. Yeah. 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 Well, um, yeah, Mike, I bet you've got some pricing stories, haven't you? I, I, I just it's immediately the your famous phrase, which I repeat to everybody. Uh oh. Everybody. <laughs> the ones who made money out of the gold rush, gold rush, were the ones selling the beer and the shovels. It's, <laughs> DJI has won the drone game. You know what I mean? It's not. Well, for the moment, for the next five, ten years, probably. Um, I wouldn't be so sure I, of that, of that, Mike. I yeah, true. The the, the commercial toy visibility stuff. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I mean, it's it, it doesn't matter whether it's the drone business or photography or anything which involves technology. There's the perception. <laughs> if everything looked difficult, nobody would try and start doing anything. Um, so you, in a way it's necessary and in a way every industry will have had this period where everybody jumps on board because everybody's interested and it looks like where that, that the buck is going to be made but then yeah it's just reality kicks in reality is reality it's... oh a funny you should say and reality kicks in because as that said here comes Chad hello Chad how are you Oh, let, let me unmute. I'm doing well. Great. How are you guys doing? All right. Uh, Bruce, should you, should you go first? What, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? Are we supposed to be tearing them apart now? No, no. Are we supposed we to be team? Do we tag team to chat? Sorry? Do we what? do a tag team? Do, do <laughs> tag team. <laughs> Bring it on. Chad who? Chad who? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It just said <laughs> Chad on the bottom underneath his name. Then. Uh, <laughs> Chad. It's Chad Bridge. Chad. Chad Reed, right? First of all, Chad, well, I've got to apologize for not getting back to you. I've had a hectic week, but I will come back to you, actually, as we discussed earlier. Um, but uh, it's good to see you on on this webcast. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> it's great seeing you guys. <laughs> so, Chad, tell us about your con collection of um, RC transmitters that you've got behind there. Because um, we know that... <laughs> Now, come on, we know we, we all know why you're yeah, here. Those so, ones don't have a lot of history. I think those are just different. Well, actually, the 7C, the Futaba 7C up there is uh, one of my favorites. That's, I flew my my wings many, many years ago with that. Mine's up, at, mine's up there, actually. You can't see it. Got, oh, no, you can't, actually. It's just next to that, that buggy wheel up there. That's where it is. Anyway, <laughs> um... Yeah, so obviously the, the the Canada thing. Now, do I get the do I get the point? Because you've just had the big sort of sponsored building dive. Was your next video? Is that were you reading well? Yeah, that? our was video. That lead in drug. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, sorry, mate. No, was that your lead in lead in drug to that to that video? Was the Canada one? No, we're not that organized. Um, <laughs> people really think that. I I think it's funny, and even Bruce kind of alluded to this people think that we're organized like people think that we like plan things and um no we we get into trouble because we're not organized so um yeah actually like i, I can't show too much but that's the that's the the special letter i got from canada <laughs> a special letter from canada <laughs> was yeah. it a thank you note? 
<laughs> I, I actually haven't opened it yet because I'm going to open it on video. <laughs> so the um, yeah, other letters are from France, I believe. But anyway, that's another subject. Um, the uh, well, what do you want? What can you share about with this? And were we too unfair at you, with you, towards you? Well, to be fair, I haven't watched the whole thing yet, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But, but I'm I'm sure. Um, well, I don't know. Let's just start fresh. Everybody has thoughts. So if you got questions, just you know, feel free to ask, and I'll answer. Ooh. How many drones were were damaged on that flight? Zero. <laughs> okay. How many drones were damaged? Do do uh, entertain do do train to that flight? Oh, which one? The the bridge. The bridge one. Uh, how many drones were damaged when? Do do get to that level of flying? Oh, I don't. I have no clue. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, well, there, there's no doubt about that. That the level of flying. I mean, they they crashed mm -hmm. earlier that day. So what happens is people fly within their envelope. Like they they know. So when they're doing something like that, they're flying within their envelope. When they're doing something to increase their skills, they push to the edge of the envelope. But you don't do that at the same time. So if you're doing something. Uh, you know, that would be considered very narrow uh, margin for error, then you don't push the envelope. You push the envelope when you're messing around in the backyard. Do you, are you I have a question. Go on, Bruce. I have a um, what was the two, sub-250 gram drone that was being flown there? I, I don't know. That did not come from me. <laughs> no, I, I, but, um, yeah, that was my only... This is my biggest concern, actually, that, that someone tried to throw everyone else under the bus by saying, oh, it was sub-250, because that basically then the, the, the regulators will look and go, wow, if you can do that with a sub-250, maybe we need to rethink the lower limit for regulatory control. And that well, could jeopardize yeah. that whole sub-250 category. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm I'm never going to lie. Like, if, if it comes from me, I'm telling you the truth. Um, second of all, I actually think we're not too far from that on a 250, uh, Graham. I mean, you know, it'll, it'll probably be six months to a year but i it, it's coming yeah it's it, you know, it, that, that right sorry bruce but i think that regulation is exactly forcing that it's forcing the technology it, it, into that space and which which at the end of the day is is kind of a good thing isn't it because you know uh, i'm sure a scientist a grown-up would be able to tell us you know however hard you can chuck a 250 gram something at somebody it's going to hurt less than a one kilo something being chucked at how much does a bullet weigh Oh, you, you and your military background. Um, but I've heard you can catch them in your teeth. Is that right? Yeah, I I can. No. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I thought. Yeah, no. Um, no, no. Yeah, okay. That's a fair point. You shot you shot me down with that one straight away. Um, but it's uh, that's all about velocity, though, isn't it? And that's. Epic, well, let's go to the start. Uh, we were talking about India, the crazy regulations that are coming in India earlier. And they've got crazy, like, uh, it was Canada, was it Canada as well? Somewhere else has got crazy weight limitations. But there's no, there's been no science to show us, uh, is it a 250 gram point? If it's a 250 gram flying wing with a really pointy nose coming flat out at you, it's going to work. If it's rounded and 250 grams and it's made of EPP, then maybe it's not going to hurt so much. But I'm not a grown-up nor a scientist, so I don't really know. But we're not getting any, um, you know, any proof of, or, or, of, of oh, I'm not saying that very well. Bruce, Bruce, help, Bruce, help. Say it better than I am. <laughs> no, well, the ballistics are, are, are important, but in respect to the sub-250 thing, I think in the bridge dive, one of the greatest concerns that the authorities seem to have is the distraction potential. If someone's driving along a bridge and they see something out the corner of their eyes flying across a great speed, it may distract them from their driving and therefore could cause an accident, to which I say we ban all women with short skirts. But the... The, the weight probably is not so much as an, an issue. It's because um, just the mere, the mere kinetics uh, are only one factor in the risk. As I say, it is that distraction thing of flying a, a, something in a crowded space or over a roadway. It doesn't matter how much it weighs because a lightweight drone can distract just as much as a heavy drone. Um, so the regulators are looking for reasons to clamp down. We know that because they want to be seen to be doing the right thing. So I really don't want us giving them 
justification for, for changing that bottom 250 gram limit. And yeah, the technology is moving down that way, which is, is a good thing because once you're flying, once you've got the goggles on, I've, it's been my experience that a lot of these little, you know, smaller drones, you wouldn't know how big they were by the flight experience. They fly really well. The technology is so fantastic. It's interesting to note that here in New Zealand, we had a sub 100 gram cutoff limit. And then they removed that on the premise that, well, technology is changing so quickly that even these little toys will soon have the capabilities that require regulation. So I would not like to see that adopted by other countries. So, you know, um, I don't know where we go from there, but while I've got Chad here, um, did you, I'd really like the feedback on that latest video you did with the guy flying line of sight, the heli pilot. Um, mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing. It, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the building dive was boring as bat poo because we've all seen it before. But his flying was really interesting. I'm wondering whether or not we're seeing something that might become another facet of the whole drone flying thing, and that is that the line of sight close proximity aerobatics, like 3D heli pilots do, but with drones. I mean, that's that's really cool. What do you think about that, Chad? I, you know, I don't know. I was kind of surprised by the feedback on that because uh, Chad Nowak flies line of sight pretty pretty crazy um, when we go out. You know, he just does it for fun to keep his skills sharp. Um, quad Mover has been on, online for years. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been aware of it, and I just figured people didn't think it was that interesting. So when we had it in the episode, I, I, I was kind of ho-hum about it. I really didn't expect that people were even going to bat an eye at it. And it's just like tons of comments. So I, I don't know. I, I'm telling you, I can't predict that stuff. Do you I, think we've reached peak drone? I mean, peak um, freestyle slash racing? Because I mean, I know I used to watch every single freestyle video and every single racing video I could see, but now I'm much more selective because it's getting pretty samey. You know I mean? Like I used to watch Mr. Steele's videos, but his stuff's pretty samey. And to, you know, at, um, to be fair, right or right, a lot of the stuff that I watch is not the flying, it's the people. It's the interaction between the people. That's the stuff that's interesting. There's so many people that have got really good flying skills now that they're all pretty much of a much list. And when I look at my the list of videos I've watched recently, it's all about the people. It's not about the flying and it's not about the quads. It's not about the technology. Do you think that, that you know, channels like Red or Riot will evolve towards focusing on the human aspect rather than the just the, the, the boring flips, rolls and building dives? Well, I mean, my belief has always been it's about the, the human aspect. That's why, um, you know, I, I started flight tests like that and rotor riot like that. It's it's really about the personalities because it always boils back down to the personalities. I mean, you don't watch golf because watching a little white ball on a big, you know, sky background is fun. <laughs> like you watch it because you're invested in who's hitting the ball. Um, I mean, yeah. So to a certain extent, yeah, the excitement, the honeymoon is over. I would say, um, in in e even if. They invent new ways of flying, you know, it'll be another little honeymoon and then that'll be over. But right now it's about the subtleties. People are watching to see, you know, the, how, you know, when they come out of the role, is there any bounce back? And, you know, and it, people are watching through these tiny little subtleties that most people just coming in won't even notice, just like you would with golf or anything else. You know, I can watch golf and they all look the same to me, but my father-in-law is like, no, look at the way... I don't know. He did something. <laughs> and, yeah, and uh, that, that's I interesting because it that keeps your market. That keeps your market pretty small. The people who are going to notice those subtleties are a fairly small group of people. And I was quite interested. I put a video up on the weekend, and I got a couple of comments in my video saying, "I'm not interested in model aircraft, but this was a great video." And that's the market I think that we should all be looking at. It's the people who uh, that the it's a bit like Top Gear. The cars are the foil, but the real entertainment is the the way the people interact with them. And I think, you know, as you, you've focused on people, and I think we're probably, the people that are going to succeed, certainly on the YouTube side of things, are going to be the ones who realize this and look more towards the people and create a crew of people that are really entertaining. I mean, you've got some really good people on on, um, on Road to Riot, and building that chemistry between them and documenting that and perhaps engaging in more things like road trips and so forth, where it's, it's more of a, instead of just individual little segments, it's more of a, a story played out in episodes. That's really cool stuff. It, it brings people in and it engages them and they, they wait for the next episode. Yeah, um, okay. I think that's where the future of this whole, that what you and I are doing, I think that's where, where our future lies actually, because it's a mass market out there of people who aren't interested in drones, aren't interested in model flying, but they really like seeing people having fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Chad, uh, uh, one question for you. Have you guys considered doing the, this kind of um, 
acrobatic videos uh, as a tutorial so that uh, the, the, your target audience can learn something and not going uh, crazy uh, doing the trying to imitate what you guys do. Uh, yeah, it's called the Trick Series. We have, I think, seven episodes in it. We, we do them about once a month or so. Um, but if you go on our channel, there's actually a playlist with the Trick Series. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now that's that's a great idea because that way you can you can get people at least not being ir irresponsible doing uh, doing uh, this trying to imitate you guys. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's uh, well. The the trick series is pretty straightforward. Typically, we're out in a park somewhere, and we. Um, my favorite format is when we take somebody that knows how to fly, but is maybe still learning, and then teach them to do a particular trick. You do. You had something like that with one of the guys at flight test. Uh, what was it called? Um, it was not Josh. Uh, the other guys was. Uh, David. Uh, yeah, no, not David Winterstall. Uh, the, the, um, okay, forget it. <laughs> what, I'm back in, it, uh, did, I, did, I, did I miss anything important? We had our, our South African switch the internet off at midnight for a minute uh, gig then. Um, no, uh, well, Chad did, was teaching us. Did Chad you all play nicely? Yeah, I think Chad, so. Oh, Chad talking was about teaching us to how, to, how to do flips and rolls with the. Uh, Sub two fifty drums. I I can do it. It's really easy. You just turn the power off and they spin out of the sky. They flip and roll <laughs> all the way. No, it works uh, every no, single time. No, no. Have you 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 do it with the the drone off and throw it in the air, right? Oh yes. Well, we can do that. We know we can do that. <laughs> I, I believe you <laughs> cannot do that. Have you seen the? Have you seen the? Uh, the the it, actually, funny enough, it's with this one, and not with this bit of paper. Um, but you can chuck this, and uh, it starts, and that's very cool. Uh, but anyway, that's another kettle of all games. What I was going to say, uh, is, and and I've I've been shot down in 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 my reaction to this, and it's quite right, uh, uh, is that the with the the, the thing that worries the worries me the most in my old man way is. The, the the amount of hate and the comments that you get on 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 your videos is very polarized it's for and against but generally there seems to be a lot of negativity but of course in the internet world that's reaction and interaction and that's good news it's what you need and it's a social media somebody said to me the other day it's you know it's the social media world but it just I worry as as the parent of a thirteen year old that's a devout fan of Rotor Riot. I do worry about all the negativity in the comments I've seen. But like, that's really old geezer, isn't it? That's really old geezer. But it can't be good for the brand at the end of the day. Well, I think it depends on on our response to the reaction. And um, you know, so I, I'd like to rewind to flight test two thousand eleven when we sliced a plane out of the air with a samurai sword and we slap, did a slap bet between Josh and, and David and I would get hate mail and people would talk about, you know, what about their kids if they try this or if they're out there slapping one another. And I said, you know, my son at the time was what, 12 or 13 years old. Um, he would actually go out and help run the camera and he didn't do that stuff. <laughs> like, you know, and it's my son, like, am I, who should I blame <laughs> if, if he does that? Um, so I, I, you know, that's kind of the way I look at it. But I also understand that you know people are influenced, but you, you can't put bumper pads on the world. You know, it's at some point people have to take responsibility for their own actions. Um, um, so that's that's kind of how I look at it, I, yeah, and I live that. So. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're you're absolutely right. And the trouble is, my 13 year old shoots me down the uh, way, and loads of other people do as well. So, so <laughs> it's me that's in the wrong, and, and he's much safer. I will say, Dan, you are much much better than me at flying. He tells me off repeatedly about the way I fly. So, <laughs> so yes, point point taken. But it um it it certainly has created a storm. And I'm surprised we haven't seen a reaction video from you yet about that storm. Or was it not that much of a storm? It was only me and Bruce that worried about it. No, I, there's all kinds of people worrying about it. But um, I don't know. I, I think, well, for one, I, 
you know, Bruce, there, there was one thing that Bruce said that I wanted to address. He made it sound like it was orchestrated. And, and I want to clarify something. Knowing there's a strong possibility of a reaction and then planning to make it happen are two different things. Um, you know, we, we do what we do. And if you go back and watch the very first episode, it was about capturing this lifestyle and, and being sincere and transparent. And if I were to actually walk through the, you know, the account of that day, we were shooting, um, you know, a trick tutorial over here. And um, one of the guys, and I'm not going to give any specifics on video. Um, <laughs> one of the guys says, hey, we should go over here. It's a really great location. And you can see the, the, the bridge and by the, and I was hungry and I was ready to leave, but I figured, oh, well, let's go over there. I had the camera packed up. I figured the guys would do a couple more flights and we would go eat. And uh, Tommy goes up and, and I'm trying to remember, I don't remember exactly the order of events, but I could just tell the energy was there. I was like, okay, wait, these guys are getting excited. I just pulled the camera back out and I just captured what I could very impromptu. And then when he was done, and, and I'll tell you prior to that, so let me back up again. I told Tommy, I said, hey, I got all the footage I need for the episode. We had planned on two episodes today. We already got them. Whatever you shoot here, you can use it for your, your vlog or whatever you want to do. It's, you know, you guys can do what you want to. It's your free time. Um, and so that was said. And then I saw this energy and, and I got the camera out and I captured it. And when we were done, I was like, okay, I have to backpedal. I'm like, this is the episode. Like, this is the energy that I want. This is really tells the story of what you guys live. Um, and that trumped, uh, you know, thinking about, you know, the laws or, or any of that. I didn't feel that he was unsafe. I know a lot of people do, but I can go through a bunch of reasons as to why I don't. Um, and, uh, and that's how it happened. It was that simple. And, and it, and we were on a plane the next morning, early the next morning. I edited it on the plane because I was so inspired by it. And Drew was like, let's upload it. And I'm like, it's Friday. You know, we got to wait till Monday. He's like, no, just, just do it. It's awesome. I was like, okay. So we released it on a Friday. So that's how planned it was. <laughs> like it went from, you know, doing it to being uploaded without really any plan. It was just kind of following the energy of the moment. I, I okay. cannot. I can't see. Sorry, Bruce. I cannot see the, that video now on your channel, uh, Chad. Have you removed it? Um, yeah, they they asked. Um, <laughs> they, in a roundabout way, they you know because I I reached out to them as soon as the news broadcast was on because I, I the news was painting a dark picture like they always do. Um, so I immediately reached out to Transport Canada and, um, and I said, uh, you know, hey, I, I don't want this to be in a negative light, you know, for the drone industry. I said, you know, we want to proactively, you know, do what we can to help, you know, get through this process and do everything. And, and um, you know, we had that conversation. Uh, they've since put me in touch with their UAV task force to see what we can do on a, on a positive note. Um, in the meantime, there's a, an, invis, an investigation going on, and you know, and I have to go through all of that and determine what the fine is and all of that. Um, and they had sent an email saying, um, you know, the video is still live. It doesn't. It, it doesn't appear as though you're you're trying to. I forget what the wording was. Something along the lines of it doesn't appear as though you. You're being friendly. You, you're, yeah, something. I don't, I don't remember exactly. And I, I thought, you know, if I'm paying a fine, don't I at least get the pay to have it up? But, <laughs> you know, I figured might as well take it down if they don't like, you know, if they don't want it up. But I, I like it there just for a talking point, you know, because if you want to reference it and, and talk about it. But there's a lot of videos out there that have already captured it. Yeah. It's in Bruce's video. You can watch it there. One thing you say, I can see where you're coming from, like the, the candid camera of drone flying. You know, you're you're the you're the basically you're like a, a war reporter. You're just capturing what happens, right? And and then you've edited it up and put it on. So I think um, you distance yourself from from having it planned and so forth. But my question to you would be, if something had gone wrong, 
Would you have still put the footage up? Well, it probably would have gone up one way or another, but, um, you know, not, not as entertainment. I mean, I think, so that's probably where I draw the line. Like if, if something bad is happening to people, I don't want to, this is still entertainment, even though it's transparent, but if something is, is, is happening that's bad for people. I mean, I don't want to celebrate that. I want to celebrate the joy and, and happiness of, you know, what these guys get to experience. But if they hurt somebody, I don't, I mean, I, I did, I showed Drew, you know, flying into Willie and I hated that. I despise that. That's probably the one moment that I actually hate of, about the, the people that participate on the show. Um, and, but that's, you know, I also have integrity and if, if that's what happened and, the guys didn't really see it as negative, then I, I need to see that through. I'm pretty sure, I, you I'm pretty know, sure. I'm going to defend you that, uh, that uh, you, you would have admitted to, you wouldn't have done a, a hit and run, as it were, and, and, and run away from, from all that. Um, I feel, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I should be the good cop to Bruce's bad cop. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's... <laughs> well, he was asking a fair question. I would he, was asking, he was asking a very, a very fair question. And then all right help help me with the editing thing then why why wouldn't you have sort of told a little bit of the story of the rest of the day leading into that energy because it almost um it almost looked like that was a let's sneak up beside this bridge and do this sort of an edit rather than the story that had happened before but I, who am i to 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 ask that, I no it's funny you see it like that i i didn't i see it as that's really interesting you see it like that why why did you what what made you take that take i suppose away? it's just a look this way look that way oh it's a bridge it's just it, it, it to me it had that fe feel of that but i mean i'm, I, I'm, I, I'm I, utterly I, wrong but um you know well there, there's no wrong in your perception i think that's it's really interesting maybe going into it you had a certain preconception that that caused that because to me it was like Oh, you know, let, uh, to me, what I was trying to portray is what we actually felt. We were walking down a path. I didn't know where we were going. And then all of a sudden it opens up and we're on the river here and, and there's a bridge or the, the, the bay. And uh, so I just tried to portray how it felt. No, I, I think it's a creative <laughs> perspective because basically what, what Chad did was like having a, a Transformers movie and removing all the dialogue scenes and only the battle scene. It's a creative uh, stuff that he did on, on yeah. the editing. Pretty much. And, and you know, yeah, a lot of it just has to do with, you know, keeping it short, sweet, and, yeah. So now, you're, you're an honest man, Chad, I know that. But uh, one thing a lot of people have raised is at the beginning of the video, you have a disclaimer saying, always check local laws, always check you're flying within the regulations, and then you film people doing the opposite. How does that work? <laughs> Actually, from day one, it doesn't say we will follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> ah, semantics, that's great. But the other thing I'd, I'd like to bring, I mean, I fly outside the regulations and I, I tell people like I fly FPV without an observer and legally in this country, you're supposed to have an observer. And I've used that as an opportunity to explain how I can do that safely. Yeah, it's against the law, but uh, this is what I've done to mitigate the risk in that situation. Do you think there's an opportunity from Rotorite's perspective to, to do an analysis of that bridge dive and just let people know that it wasn't as simple as it looked, that you guys had taken measures in whatever form to ensure that this wasn't just a, um, a risk to the public safety, that you know the guys, are, are they know what they're doing, the gear is, is quality gear, all that sort of stuff. They use Rotorite motors, you know, that's good stuff. So is it an opportunity to actually use it as an educational um, situation to enhance the public's awareness of what you guys are doing and that it's not just what it appears to be because at least for well, the name of the channel right or right it's edgy it's it's on the, the the limits it's you know pushing the boundaries but you're doing it in a safe way is, is there a chance to do that and win back some favor with regulators perhaps and the people who were so negative with the comments on their video on the video oh yeah i mean um yeah i mean we would do it to i i, I don't want to I would never do it to pander or win people back. I would do it because it supports our, our mission. You know, we want, we want the hobby to grow and I think that's something healthy and um, yeah. And it's something I would find, honestly, I personally would probably even find that more interesting, you know, I, I, my style. Um, I like, 
I like the behind the scenes and understanding, you know, how people think and why they make the decisions they make. So, yeah, I think that's that very much would fit within our lineup. Um, no, I didn't have it slated as an episode, but I absolutely would be. Actually, you should you should be on that episode. I, I, I for one would love to hear a narrated version of that that video with the pilot explaining why he flew where he flew, what factors were involved in the decision to fly where he flew, so he didn't actually fly over the road, why not, this is why not, and this is when he was coming down, this is what he was thinking as he was coming down with a view to what's my exit strategy if something goes wrong, all those little things that will enable the general viewer to realise, hey, this wasn't just a bunch of people clowning around, these people are professionals, they know what they're doing, and they've thought this through, and that makes everyone feel a lot more comfortable, I think. And they're, no, that they're not I, using an Obi King $100 drone to do it. That's also but, important. They, yes, but they might also be. You could probably mitigate that that cheap cheap drone risk with the way you fly. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean not everybody can afford. You know, everyone would love to afford rotor right gear, but not everyone can, Louis. So, you know, even those people can fly safely. You know, they yeah, don't have to. But don't do don't do like like they do. Uh, that's the yeah. But, you, but let's face it: if you're at that point, you will have crashed it anyway because you're still learning. But once you hit the point of being able to fly like that, then you. I'm sure. Well, again, this is part of the video. That is probably you probably do need the need the gear to be able to, you know, reliably do that. Um, yeah. It'd be it'd be a very difficult video to make because you don't want a nanny, you don't want to lecture, you don't want to preach, but you just want to get that what's going through people's minds when they're doing this. I'd I'd love to know that. I'd love to know what Tommy was thinking when he was flying. And as I say, a narrated version of that video would be incredibly entertaining, useful, and it would mitigate, I think, some of the thing without having to lose your edgy style because, you know, the, the commentary can be edgy in itself. Well, it's the behind-the-scenes video. Well, to my mind, I've no idea how they do it. <laughs> no idea how they do it. It's so cool. It's like, how the heck do they do that? It's just like, just tell me how you do that. It's very uh, To me, very... they just threw up the camera in the air and the camera came down. Exactly, exactly. If you throw a camera up enough times against the side of the bridge, one time is going to come down. I like did it's bound to, yes, bound to, bound to happen like that. I yeah, know it's a, we are caning you, Chad. I feel very much like we're caning you. Here. It's not fair. It's a lynch mob. Let's gather up. With, I can't think of your American. Not talks. even as bad as the comments. Uh, no, the comments aren't going so bad. I don't think. And I was quite surprised actually how uh, uh, reasoned the comments were on um, on on my video. Uh, I, it's good and, it, and that's dialogues what we all need to have as a community and as a industry moving forward um because you know not everybody's idea is the absolutely bob on right idea and and, and we, we've got to got to move forward and and thinking safety is good so do you think when when can we look forward to the you can call it the team nana edition because it's the old man version uh that video the walkthrough <laughs> like when, when can we expect that chad come on team nana one Oh, I have no idea. Like I said, it wasn't even planned. So maybe, uh, who, who knows? <laughs> well, One good thing has come of this whole video thing, though, because the regulators keep pushing the thing, you know, this, this community needs to be self-policing. And we've seen a fantastic example of the community self-policing by the comments on this video. So in some ways, it's probably going to reinforce the fact that it's a community that has uh, takes safety seriously and is willing to criticize those who they feel um fly outside the, the realms of, of reasonable operations and i think that may have one of some brownie points with regulators so it's not all bad and you know as i said anything that creates a discussion is definitely good so i think this video was something that was needed it was an essential part of the development of this community and i think it has actually made us more credible in the eyes of regulators which is a good thing because it'll give us more sway they know we're not just a bunch of idiots we actually do look at every video and consider seriously whether it is something that we like or not and i think you know regulation safety it's now got a higher profile than it did before the rotor right video went up hmm that's really interesting that is, that is probably one thing i hadn't really thought about was the self-policing and um you know it, it is funny though because the, the, you got the guys that say i'm reporting you and then you got the guys that are like oh you're just a snitch and you know and, and the thing is 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 my approach is it's not like we do a video like that and then hope somebody doesn't report us it's like, I, I, I do it out in the open. You know, it's, it's not like our channel's a secret. 
Um, if we're going to get reported, we're going to get reported. We got reported for the building dive that Tommy did last year, and the guys got called into the FAA office. And, you know, it was found that they, you know, there may have been some gray areas, but technically they didn't do anything illegal. They were part 107. There, were, there was no traffic under them. There was no people directly under them. Um, and, you know, and it was what it was. And we still have people citing that as if it were illegal and talking about this and it's like, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's just all over the place. Yeah. I, I sort of decided that I had to go down on one side of the fence or the other. You can't sit on the fence. And so I am the, I, I went down on the side of the, the doddery old man side of the fence, which, which, you know, normally I'd leave to Bruce, but he was asleep at that time. And, um, it, but the, the, the comments that, that I've had, I'm I'm impressed with it. It didn't degenerate into a huge argument. It was it's it's pretty good. There's a little bit of it there, and um, so that that energy is always good. And you know, I can see I made some mistakes in in what I thought, and and people. And we lost. And we, we lost, lost them. Africa. We lost South Africa. <laughs> no, oh, but, but uh, uh, oh, wait, they're back. They're back. Oh, we're back. Oh. Did I make it go away? Yeah, yeah. you, you, you were there, said you were not uh, speaking good things about chat, so. He had the uh, NHC. You see, uh, he, he, he has somewhere there, he's got a big switch for the internet, hasn't he? He's got this on or off. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it, was, it was a modem dive. It's a modem dive. <laughs> I'll tell you, the, the internet is like that here. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, uh, did you do anything nice while I was away? Was it good? Uh, I, it was pretty quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a terrible platform. That's a clue, isn't it? That's a clue that we should we should stop baiting Chad and and call it a day. And uh, thank thanks very much for turning up, Chad. You you are a sport. You are a friend to the channel, as one might say. You don't have to do it. <laughs> it was very good of you. Um, well, you. You guys are always welcome to throw anything at me. It's really easy when you have nothing to hide. So. We, we can show you uh, an alley, a uh, Nate Ender alley. Uh, I still find something really heavy and see how you do. I'll, I'll, I'll have to go train, you know, before, but yeah. So, what we can have is some live event, we can have a Chuck Stuff at Chad event. <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, that, that Japanese drone with the candy. Yes, yes, that was Chucking Chan candy. Anyway, all right, as I normally do before we go, does anyone else have anything else that they have seen? This week that they would like to discuss. Oh, did you see the Mavic at eight and a half thousand feet? No. I oh, I have seen yeah. several of those. Yeah. I've seen yeah. several of those. Mm. Was it Mikos really? or the Greek island of Mikos? I think. Yeah, they flew up to eight and a half thousand feet. It was you know pretty boring actually. <laughs> did it fly? Did it really fly, or was it fake? No, no, it's yeah, real. It was and you know the problem that they're running up against now is that the batteries Battery. are killing themselves going up there, and there's nothing left. For people are then uh, no. well, they're stopping. Yeah, they're stopping the climb at uh, with like eight percent remaining, and even falling <laughs> eight thousand feet, eight percent don't really help you when you get to the bottom. And and the puffing people are puffing brand new batteries on on these flights. Um, uh, yeah. I, I got a, a, an update from the DJI apps today, so I don't know if they are going to do a hard hard limit on that. Perhaps it keeps getting it keeps getting hacked, and there are uh, things I can't talk about uh, that have happened in that world. All I'll say is, if you don't want to upset hackers, don't put taunts in your firmware saying, nah, 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 you'll never break this because guess what happens? And um, yeah, yeah, that's 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 what's happening. <laughs> DJI uh, are, are doing really, really well and 
done lots of great things and they've moved the industry on and all that sort of thing but it's not really a smart move <laughs> to do that because the hackers will win um uh, in in the comments smooth virus is saying did you guys see the story out of washington where did your own put sensors at an army base yes and and detected the rf uh, going out uh, from all the traffic that was all around and um that that is the primary way now of um for the detection systems and then taking over uh, the systems and again that's that's why the hackers are that's why there's such an interest in in breaking that gear is so that you can take out com com control of the aircraft over the c2 link because um it's almost like when they shoot a terrorist isn't it it's no good shooting him because you've got rid of the information if you capture the drone then you've got all the information and uh, that's what you want to do you want to capture the thing and bring it back and that's that's very everywhere i'm ranting on anyone else with anything else uh, how come Mike didn't have anything to say? He's not allowed to. He's not allowed to talk. Because he's... I, I, uh, huh? Go on, Mike. Go on, Mike. Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm, uh, my enthusiasm lies with the development of how people are integrating technology, how they're using technology, less so on the consumer side of things. Consumers just can... It, it's a fairly derogatory remark, but uh the consumer market has driven the interest which propels the technological development and now that the battle is on with the hackers um this is this is going to get into seriously interesting territory again not just because of the the flying drones but because of the driving drones because of the seafaring drones um and we're very soon going to live in a world which most people Part of the conversation uh, before you joined was about uh, how the majority of the population, like most people who drive a car, wouldn't know what was underneath the hood. Um, we're, we're now into territory where, um, and uh, tinfoil hat Tuesday is my enthusiasm as well, we're getting into territory where we we have a class of people who comprehend a technology which is well beyond what a lot of people uh, potentially can comprehend and certainly most people are not going to make any attempt to so there's there's going to be a whole that's that that's that's my area of interest is is where the where we are now is really the start of the next curve um and it doesn't just involve the flying drones and it's certainly consumer industry they're going to try and push out the the, the, the automated cars um but one of the most interesting things which i had seen about that was the algorithms to decide who to kill you know if mm -hmm. the, the machine comes across a situation where you can run over a group of school kids or the nobel peace prize winner or somebody else and the computer you know that's without even getting into the hackers without getting into really cd cd territory which is my other enthusiasm as gary will point out is that since the last time we spoke many of the things which were regarded as pure conspiracy have been proven to be entirely true when it comes to the technology that we're talking about um you have you have uh it's fascinating it's utterly fascinating and it the interface between developing technology um the developing technological culture uh and what part people choose to have a place in it or not have a place in it beyond beyond just consuming for fun um that's that's a, that immensely interesting immensely interesting well, you know, Chad, you're you're also parents of so eighteen down to to, to four months of my my children, and uh, you wonder where 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 they are going to fit in this technological world. You know, what 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 advice do we give them now? It's not go out and be a blacksmith. Well, maybe it is actually. Maybe there's a fortune. It is, it is. It is yeah. probably go out and be a blacksmith, isn't it? Actually, I'll pick the wrong it. analogy or an electrician or uh, anyway, it's, it's wrong analogy times. But yes. I suppose, but I suppose there's always been there's always been technologies that people wouldn't have understood in in 
their time. Yeah, but uh, something though, regarding what what Mike was saying is now we start to see the the appearance of um, new companies that are actively selling anti-drone technology and we are going to see some rise of these companies trying to sell everyone uh, the anti-drone technology like we've seen the guys that were selling uh, the the latest fed on drones and that pick has already gone now we are going you are starting to see the, the rise of guys that are selling anti-drone technology and uh, that's also going to be something to, to watch out in the future now and that has Lewis, to do with i'm with... still looking to make a buck and that is that is one of the to the moon man to the moon that's yeah really huge yeah, but I bet I, I, I bet there was I bet there was technologies in 1890 to stop people taking photos. I bet there's always you know one thing comes <laughs> along. And I, bet, I bet you I bet you could track. You I bet there was. Sorry, Chad. You mean stealing their souls? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, and somebody would have sold you a <laughs> thing that would have been stood on the cart. Now, this one here stops from stealing your souls. This one here grows your <laughs> hair, and this one does this. You know, I'm, I'm sure. I, I bet you we can see parallels in in all technological changes. Yeah. And the great thing is, we've got Bruce with us, and he was there for most of them. So he'll be able to. <laughs> he'll. I bet you, I'll, I'll just send this up because Bruce, Bruce can always come up with a sensible parallel or something like that. Where I can't, I can't, but I bet you, you know, technology gets thwarted by others' ideas. Over to you, Bruce. This was no, where Tim Banner was Tim Baby, right? <laughs> yeah, I have a range of liniments and lotions which are available on my website to, to solve all these problems. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but I bet, I bet, you know, any technology that comes on has always got an anti-technology or a, a thwarting method because there's always going to be a group that's willing to buy into stopping whatever. So I don't, yes, the anti-drone... Why do you US. think your internet connection has gone out several times this evening? Oh, just because it's drizzling is the main reason. Uh, because uh, we're talking about cell phones in Africa. This is the only thing available here to me is the cell phone and this wireless link for the internet, which is a private wireless link to the internet. Um, I'm sure it was a potion from Bruce. But the uh, the interesting thing here, if you want to talk about technology, is technically that our, our telephone company owns the rights to data along the roads, and that data would go along telephone lines or copper lines they don't exist they've been stolen for about 100 kilometers around here but if you if you fire wi-fi across a road you're breaking the law here um because the telco the established telco uh owns the rights to data along the roads <laughs> who go go through who, who'd have thought it um so that's that's a technology thwarting technology idea isn't it or or, or stuff i don't know where i was going with that I, wasn't going anywhere with that i think cool. I think that I don't know that there are any, this is the great thing about the period that we're at. I think is that advent of connection and you know being able to swap data, connect to each other, control things, all this type of stuff. The field is entirely the, the field has never been more open for. I don't know if I would say this correctly, but symbiotic developments, huge leaps forward. Um, uh, it, it, there's, I mean, the camera was one thing, you, you know, the, the ability to, to, to use chemicals to, to, to capture the soul, so to speak, um, is one thing, but it, it in some ways stood alone. And then X amount of years later, a couple of people were looking at two photographs and then they realised that they could you create topography. They could see they had this stereo imaging with it. So the rate of change... The rate of change is different now, and and the field of play is different as well. Um, I mean, there, there, like you say, there are always parallels, but this, as <laughs> this is. Well, well, look what we're doing now. Look, look what we're doing right now. I'm in South Africa. Yeah. Chad's in in America. Bruce is in New Zealand. Louis in um, Spain, and you're in London. And I'm not in Spain. Uh, at oh, least when I started, when I started, I was in Lisbon, or in Portugal. Oh. 
Uh, well, some some people call that West Spain. Is this on your um, brand? Yeah, I didn't realize that that was what. That... Yeah, it was my my new brand jet po jet powered drone. <laughs> but um, but well, sorry, I got that I got that bit just a bit wrong there. But we're all around the world, and this hasn't cost us a fortune to broadcast moving images across a platform. Yes, when I first came to South Africa thirty years ago, just to talk to one of you would have been a booked telephone call with the telco. Mm -hmm. And it would have been at a time, it would have been from a time to a time, and that's it. And now we do we chat around the world. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, we are living in a time of massive change. And um, it is a wonder what to tell, what to tell teenagers what to do. <laughs> and now go and do this job. You can't tell them anything because you know. You well, know you can't tell them anything world, anyway. Maybe. You, well, they, yeah, you <laughs> can't tell them anyway, but. But that's good and that's right and fit and proper and that is the way that the world should be. You should never be able to tell a teenager something. So hang on, Spain, Lake Catalonia. Oh dear me, there's some there's some comments you don't want to be looking at here, Larry. Don't look at the live comments. Whatever you do, <laughs> if, if, you, if you don't if you don't want to know the results, look away now. Um, no, 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 no. I, I know I know that story. I know that story. Let let Catalonia go and get Portugal. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Anyway, look, we are turning this into a rant now. Does anyone else have anything else they wanted to see from the world of drones or talk about in this last week? Well, going uh, once, going to just, just go to autopilot and try the new betas from plane that Tree just put out so with uh, some TLC. And, and, and we and are about dollar swarm. Uh, yeah, that was Michael Oborn that did the first. Uh, it was not such uh, as a swarm. Um, well, that was the uh, fall of the leader. But guys are having an argument now: is how many how many drones make a swarm? So I'm going to put it out to the committee here. How three. many? You say three. Oh, Chad says three, and the number was three. three. So so then uh, that's okay. So it's oh, uh, 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 I would I would say a swarm has to be at least more than the Intel swarms. <laughs> oh god that's like 200 or something now, yeah. isn't it i don't know anything below that is not a swarm it's just something pretending to be a swarm let's go but that again the technology brand these 100 chat i don't, I don't know if you seen this it's got um uh, uh rg pilot in it it's gps it's all the other good things it's 100 and i think even on offer they're 139 dollars and they've got they've had them swarming now and they do a full fully autonomous flight and what is that what are you holding it's a it's a sky viper sky rocket sky, sky rocket, rocket i don't know it's sky v rocket. 24 50 G gps and um wait are you saying it'll do swarm yeah it will do swarm yeah, it will do missions do the whole that the pilot does that one I does do it it's it's it, 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 it's ridiculous but um see i've i've got to crash this one because my 13 year old lad's busy not crashing it and my other ones aren't interested in it because i'd like to take it take the autopilot out of the gps and put it in uh, uh what would have been like a free flight model or something and make a a a, a bolsa a stick and tissue model uh, uh, completely on, autonomous be, be an hero get that on on a racing drone with some heavy or uh, some heavy powered motors from chad and uh, you can hack it to, to, to yeah to, it would be very very pointless because i would be so slow it would be the most pointless thing in the world you uh, could go this, you could go to beat the the, the, Mav the mavic record on heights <laughs> i can't uh, I'm actually well no i shouldn't um <laughs> I, I did have something going to a thermal once it did go just, quite i i tested the um the the strength of my glasses uh, with it um <laughs> and uh eventually it got, got out the thermal <laughs> anyway <laughs> that's another story altogether right look this is like the fifth time i've tried to win this come on come on now come on we must have had enough now go once go twice thank you very much guys thank you very much dear viewer for watching uh wherever you are in the world it was a very disconnected uh rant ranting session uh this afternoon evening or morning wherever you are in the world thank you chad for being such a good sport and coming and um and answering our, our questions um Anytime. and uh, uh you know 
at the end of the day, love, love or hate, you you probably are. Uh, you and your um, various channels have probably done more, like Bruce as well. Although Bruce is obviously an education and how not to do things generally. Um, but you've probably done more for the industry than uh, between the two of you than than, than pretty much anybody else. Um, Louis and Mike, thanks very much. Um, dear viewers, don't forget to join us again, 2100 GMT. And next uh, Tuesday, uh, like, subscribe, do all those other good things you're supposed to do. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again then. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Thank you, Gary. Bye. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Cheers.